So I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to create countdown timers for flows specifically using promo features. Uh, so once you go to promofeatures.com and you log into your account, um, you're going to definitely want to click on the dashboard. What I've learned is it's best to have one single countdown timer for one email because if you try and reuse the same countdown timers in multiple emails, somehow or another, it can mess with the cookies and it can cause the countdown timer to not show the accurate time based on, for example, if you send an email saying you have 24 hours to use this code, when they come back to it, you want it to be a true 24 hours. So create one countdown timer per email. And how you do it is you just click on that create uh, countdown timer. And the first thing you can do is these are like predetermined styles you can use. So I'm going to do science for the purpose of this video. And typically I use this one and to match their color, I just make it black and it updates once you click out of there. And then what you want to do. So for example, if we're doing a flow where we're telling someone they have, say 24 hours, what you want to do is you want to use the transaction function for this particular timer and you want to name it something you can recognize. So you can always go back to it and know like what email it's for. So for example, let's just say, I don't know, let's say it's, I'll type in science, the client. In this case, I'd have to do it because this is one account for two different businesses for the same owner. But anyway, maybe I do like um, exit intent. And I could just put, maybe it's going in email too, just so I can remember what emails each timer is in. So anyway, uh, I want to make it 24 hours. So I can literally, uh, you, you could do either or. You could just type in one here, one day, and it'll say, it'll start like this. Um, you can even, if you, for example, if I wanted to disable the days, it will compensate. So what I mean by that is like, for example, what if we're doing 48 hours? Well, one thing to know is for some reason, if you go anything over 24 hours, it won't go here. So like I can go 24, hours, I can put 24 hours there, but if it's 25 or above, it won't work as you'll see. So if it's anything over 24 hours, so for example, if this is 48 hours, what you do instead is just put two days, right? And so see how it says two days, but if you'd rather just show it within hours, what you'll see is again, it'll compensate if I disable the days. And so now it's at 48 hours, right? And then, okay, so yeah. So we've got that in place. And then since, in this example, I'm going to make it actually expire. So what will happen is when this timer runs out, I'm going to go back to 24 hours. But anyway, so like once this timer runs out for an individual recipient based on tracking their cookies, we don't want it to just say zero or something like that. We want it to have a message. And the default message is offer expired. And you don't see it here because by default, the color is white. So I'm going to just match it. I'm going to make it black. And so this is what they'll see if they go back to the email and look at this timer anytime after the 24 hour period. And with this transactional type of setting, this timer won't start until the recipient opens it for the first time. Okay. So offer expired. And then all I have to do is just go to save timer and give it a second. And now what you could do here is you can, this code here is what you're going to paste into Clavio. But before you do that, you want to make sure the settings are right because this code will change based on the settings you choose here. I used to use responsive, um, but honestly, in terms of how it looks on desktop and mobile, it looks like there's no difference to me. And when using responsive for sometimes, when I paste this into the Clavio template, for some reason it, it, it messes up. So keep it on fixed and then just click center. And then all you got to do is just copy. And then to add it to it, to an email template, I'll do an example here. I'll just make a copy of this. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go in here. Okay. So you can see we have an old one here. So we're just going to pretend like this doesn't exist. And how you add the timer is you just drag a text box wherever you want it to go. I'll just put it center here and then you just go into source and then just control all a and then paste over it with the code and hit save and you'll see it pops up right there 
Looks good on mobile too. And then another thing to know is that, let's say you put this in place, you got the campaign ready, the client approves it and it's scheduled to go out tomorrow. But say tomorrow something happens and they have to delay it a day, right? So like, I know I'm sort of mixing strategies here because I was talking about this being for flows, but it's still important to know that if you were to use a countdown timer for a campaign and something get changes, the cool thing is what I can do is when I go back into the account, let's say I started off fresh, I log into the account and I'm on dashboard. You can literally just go to uh, timers for email and go to list of email timers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find the one that I used that I wanna adjust if I need to adjust the timer. And all I have to do is edit. And I don't know, let's just say we decided we're gonna do 48 hours instead of 24 hours. So I can just literally increase it by a day here. And then all I have to do is hit save and it updates in real time. Um, you know, based on this, this code is going to be the same. So I don't have to do anything. I don't have to copy this again go back into the, into the campaign and paste it again. It's updates live. So as you'll see here, once I refresh this, you'll notice that it, the uh, change takes place that I just did on countdown timer. It's, you're going to see, it's going to say about 48 hours. And, um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.